it's time to paint a Primark. Here's the model I'm painting this time. It's the Artel W Iron Boss. A big thank you goes out to my pal Chris, who allowed me to paint this model of his. And what a model it is. This orc is massive, and it's the primary reason I began to consider him to be a Primark. And fans of speed rejoice. I've been informed that this guy will be of the Evil Sons clan, and as logic dictates, we'll be painting him up in a red scheme. So with all that out of the way, let's begin. Having already soaked and scrubbed the components with soapy water, the first step will be priming. I'll be using Vallejo's white primer through an airbrush. I'll use this process to provide a bit of context about the nature of this video. This was quite a substantial project, effectively requiring the same amount of effort as a 60mm armored character. Like what you would expect with Gilliman or Abaddon. Combine that with the ongoing work for evolving this channel in the new year, left me a little thin with regards to time. And add to that the happenstance of getting this same Chris for my local club Secret Santa, it was too tempting not to add this prime work in with his gift. So this one will be a bit shallower than my usual Let's Painting videos, with regards to the depth of each process shown. And with that disclaimer done, let's carry on. After the model is primed, I will then tint the skin green using Contrast Warp Lightning, diluted with Contrast Medium. The result of tinting the white surface with warp lightning is an extremely vibrant green. Rest assured that with the work yet to come, and the final washes, this will be toned down. And the first step in that process will be to use Wa Flesh. I'm using it to tone down areas where the skin meets the mega armor, or intersects with straps, as well as areas which would be darker due to the natural lighting. Next I'm going to begin building up some tonal variety by mixing in grass green mat. What I'm doing with it is trying to hit the individual muscle groups to add further definition of the anatomy. On to the details of the organics. To start, I will use Wraithbone to base the entirety of his mouth, and then layer grass green mat and augurin camo to further enhance his musculature. This turned out to be a pretty neat solution to models with open jaws. To start, simply coat the entire mouth in Wraithbone so we can apply a contrast color at a later stage to provide quick but effective shading over these small areas. Then using the green tones, I will begin to paint in lines oriented to the orc's musculature. Because might is right. I want this guy to look shredded, so I am layering and trying to get the brush strokes relatively fine to mimic the look of muscle striations. Then I will use Volopus Pink to continue with his mouth. I find contrast paints to be perfect for this kind of detail. You just gotta avoid nicking the wrong areas. Takes you back to childhood, where you gotta color within those lines. For the eyes, I will be using Mephiston Red and layering with Wild Rider Red. I will also use Abaddon Black to do his pupils. After this is done, I'll use Wa Flesh and Contrast Warp Lightning to push the darker values of the orc skin. Here's the result. Next will be his pants, using the following colors. To start, the base color will be a 1 to 1 mix of Abaddon Black and Stegadon Scale Green, followed by a wash of Athonian Camo Shade. After the wash dries, I'll layer up the brighter tones with Stegadon Scale Green mixed with a very small amount of Augrin Camo to punch up the values. Next for the brown leather areas, I will base them using Rhinox Hide and layer up those tones with Red Matte Brown, which is color matched to Mornfang Brown, and Kislev Flesh. Next I will base all of the Mega Armor with Iron Warriors. This is a massive step, so I will be jumping around in larger degrees during this stage. While the metals are being blocked in, I will base the bronze components using Balthazar Gold and then layer them with Psychorax Bronze. For the backpack reactor, I'll be using all of these colors. Warp Lightning will be used as a glaze to tint areas to simulate a subtle glow. Grass Green Matte and Goss Blaster Green and Arctic White will all be layered to achieve the main gradation of the effect. 
Upon building it up to this point, I decided I need to define the red and black surfaces of the Mega Armor. The colors I'm using for this are Mephiston Red and Abaddon Black. To start, I begin filling in the components of the Mega Armor, which will be red. Then to start the black surfaces, I'm jumping back to the reactor to fill in those panels. I found this aspect of the model strangely challenging compared to painting Space Marines, where you know what surfaces are supposed to be what color. So I adopted an organic workflow, switching colors as I went along, keeping in mind the objective of achieving a primarily red scheme, which isn't too loud, but is also visually pleasing. Jumping ahead, things are beginning to take shape. For the cables and other accessories, I want to introduce some contrasting elements. For this I am using Stegodon Scale Green, which is then layered with Instar's Ocean Blue Matte. Next I'm going to weather the Mega Armor, and I will attach the Power Claw at this stage as well. This is actually me fixing a mistake. Because these parts were painted metal initially, I could have just left the edges of the painted panels messy, allowing that metal base to show through. Which in retrospect I would 100% recommend doing but keep in mind that only the edges can be done in that carefree manner, as where painted armor panels meet surfaces that differ, you need to paint with control. At this stage I use some white and black paints to mark out a few panels with those orky checker patterns. And I decided to hit a few outstanding cables with yellow. Here I'm using Averland Sunset. And jumping a great deal ahead, we have arrived at the point where the weapon arm is attached and all the components have been given their base colors. The Mega Armor itself is looking a little too bright for the rest of Chris's army, so it's time to bring it down with some washes. For the Mega Armor plating, I'll be using Nuln Oil and Agrax Earthshade on various components, and using both washes on the armor parts near the ground. Seraphim Sepia will be used on the Bone Elements, and Athonian Camo Shade will be used on the Grot Gunner. The idea being to tint his skin uniquely, so his end result tone is different to that of our Prime Orc. As always, when applying shades and washes, I am trying to not let it clump up in undesired areas, which on a large, highly detailed sculpt like this requires some extra attention. And now for the finishing touches some edge highlighting, and some special effects. And after all these steps are complete, all that will be left to do is give this model a protective varnish, and put him on a base suitable for a Prime Orc. Here we go. This Prime Orc is ready to charge into the ranks of the enemy, and become the living embodiment of Orcdom. Thanks for watching. This was a challenging model to paint for my first orc. Mistakes were made and lessons were learned. But in retrospect, I did enjoy the journey. And it's because I've longed for a prime orc model since that old Orktober hype season when the Codex released. But get a load of this guy. He is massive. Seeing him next to Gilliman, it's pretty much a perfect fit as to what I envisioned a prime orc to be on the tabletop. And to that end, because this model will be used for a campaign, a data sheet has been put together for this purpose, so I figured I would share it for those interested in running their own Prime Orcs that use this chassis for a narrative or open play games. And I think with that, this video is complete. If you found this video useful or enjoyable, please give it a like. Subscribing is the best way to help this channel grow. Thanks again for watching, and thanks again to Chris for letting me paint this monster of his on the channel. And from me to you, have a very merry Orky Christmas, and happy holidays.